I will start off kind of saying that our understanding of the innate immune response and hepatitis B patients is probably not quite to the in-depth that we study the T-cell response in these patients. And we still have a lot to learn, but I'm also going to show you we've identified a lot of points where we might be able to intervene in terms of immunotherapy and for innate immunity. So just to kind of put things in perspective, I want to go through a little bit of background and really I would say we still have very little understanding of the role of innate immunity in the early uh, stages of the acute HPV immune response. And where we've really studied is mainly in the context of immunopathogenesis and chronic HPV. And so what you're going to see in the next few slides, um, Mala has been really instrumental in obtaining a lot of this data, so if you didn't catch it in her talk, you're going to get it again, so we'll really hammer it home. Um, but I would say the innate immune response in chronic HPV is arguably more complex than the T cell response, potentially, because you have to assume that every cell can participate some way in innate immunity, including the parenchymal cells like the hepatocytes, endothelial cells. Um, antigen presentation is an innate function that controls adaptive immunity, and so the function of, of monocytes, dendritic cells, is, 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 is critical here. And then you have activation of innate effectors. Um, these would be NK cells, mate cells, gamma delta T cells that really dominate the liver. Um, they have been shown to be negative regulators in chronic hepatitis B, but also potentially antiviral targets. And ultimately, we still have very little data on how they, how or if they can recognize and eliminate HPV infected hepatocytes specifically. So just to kind of go a little bit of background from the different components of the innate immune response, starting with the myeloid cells, it's probably been studied the most, in particular the dendritic cells, because of their role in activating T cells and targeting for therapeutic vaccines. And there's, a little, there's quite a bit of noise in the literature, but if you look closely, I would say most in terms of dendritic cells, their ex vivo function is largely intact. Um, and uh, antiviral therapy, in, in some cases, has been shown to improve this. Um, monocytes have been studied to a much lesser extent. Uh, we showed a few years ago that they can contain HPV antigens in the circulation. Uh, we didn't see any evidence that they, uh, they were able to stimulate T cell proliferation, uh, similar to healthy donors. And other groups have shown that different cohorts of chronic HPV patients are able to produce antiviral cytokines to the same level. Um, but we also have to think one of the caveats of studying these myeloid cells in chronic hepatitis B patients is that these cells are short-lived in the blood, typically only one to three days potentially, which is much, much shorter than T or B cells, which can be present for many years potentially. And so myeloid cells are going to be highly susceptible to environmental changes. Uh, and uh, as Mala mentioned, a, a recent observation is that the myeloid-derived suppressor cells are uh, highly in, or significantly increased in chronic hepatitis B patients. And she went a little bit more in depth into the mechanism, but these cells produce arginase and IL-10, which is known to suppress the HPV or uh, virus-specific T cell expansion. So in terms of the effector cells and the innate arm of the immune response, NK cells have been studied the most. Um, and uh, as was pointed out, in case cell, their antiviral function is impaired. They produce less interferon gamma in general in chronic hepatitis B patients. But they also potentially contribute to the pathogenesis. And it was also described that through a trail dependent mechanism, the NK cells could uh, mediate uh, a, uh, a hepatocyte, uh, hepatocyte death in the liver. And then also, as Mel pointed out, the NK cells also have the potential to actually suppress the T cell response in chronic hepatitis B patients through a trail-dependent mechanism, whereas removing the NK cells from the culture, you can see a significant expansion of HPV-specific T cells, which is a trail-dependent mechanism. So going through a little bit of this background, um, we published a, a review a, a couple of years ago, and I don't want to go through this extensively, but we identified at the time at least eight different points in the innate immune response that you could potentially intervene to uh, as, a, as a means of immunotherapy for chronic hepatitis B. Um, and so rather than going through all of these, I really wanted to focus on what is coming down the clinical pipeline and what's actually in, uh, in drug development at the moment. And by and large, what these are are the pattern recognition receptors, so drugs targeting either toll-like receptors or um, intracellular RNA and DNA sensing uh, pathways, RIG-I and STING, and there's also some inactivated viruses also targeting 
multiple pattern recognition receptors. And the way that these are generally delivered, at the, at the moment anyways, is an orally delivered drug that is absorbed through the intestine, goes through the portal vein, and reaches the liver. And upon reaching the liver, these drugs either are going to activate cells of the innate immune system, such as the monocytes, the dendritic cells, macrophages, or they have the potential to work directly on hepatocytes, uh, particularly rigi. So one of the issues with these innate immunomodulators is that they are indiscriminate. So they're going to the liver. They're not targeting any HPV-specific cells necessarily. They are essentially, the goal is to induce antiviral or innate cytokine production. Um, again, I think this is mainly from myeloid cells, and, and, and this is just a general panel of what you would expect by targeting these pattern recognition receptors. So you get a broad range of cytokines and chemokines that are going to be produced. Um, but one thing we really don't understand yet either is what impact these uh, innate immunomodulators are going to have on antigen processing, because this could come down to boosting T cells by targeting the innate populations in the liver. So what is the rationale? So to go back and give everybody a little bit of history on why these drugs were likely developed. So we've known for more than 10 years from nice studies in mice that if you activate innate immunity, you can reduce HPV replication in HPV transgenic mice. And this was done either by infecting with other viruses or injecting different TLR agonists into HPV transgenic mice. And so you can see in the presence of these TLR agonists, the clearance of the RNA or the HPV replicative intermediates in the, in the mouse liver. In the mice, this was mainly uh, mediated by an interferon alpha uh, immune response that was localized to the liver. Um, so this was targeting the TLRs, but there's also evidence in uh, injecting rig agonists into HPV transgenic mice results in a similar reduction in HPV, in this case HPV DNA in the liver. And you can see that with the last one here. So rig in particular would induce uh, significant levels of interferon alpha, interferon beta, and interferon lambda. Um, there's also evidence that was developed from, uh, generated in mice that simply uh, the addition of Th1 promoting cytokines, uh, IL-18 and IL-12 are able to suppress HPV replication in the liver. So this was either injecting recombinant cytokines or uh, hydrodynamically injecting or transfecting the liver with uh, plasmids. But in both cases, injection of IL-18 or injection of IL-12 could reduce HPV replication in the liver. So these are Th1 targeted cytokines. And so a couple of years ago, we showed that um, using TLR8 in human liver monocytes taken from perfusates, we could stimulate a lot of IL-12 and IL-18 production. And similar to this interferon gamma effect produced in mice, we could see that this uh, combination of cytokines induced a lot of interferon gamma production in NK cells and in, in mate cells and gamma delta T cells, so the innate effectors in the liver. And as Mala pointed out in her talk, IL-12 really seems to be a key uh, third signal in restoring HPV-specific T cell function, at least in vitro in, in, in the study so far. And what IL-12 tends to do is it increases the frequency of HPV-specific T cells, it increases the amount of interferon gamma those T cells can make, and as Mala pointed out as well, in combination with anti pd one blocking, which is impossible to read on that slide, but the, the tallest bar, it can really synergize with checkpoint blockade to enhance T cell expansion. So these Th1 promoting cytokines could play a very important role. And so to come back to this, you know, in the first slide, in this slide before, I said a large production of, indiscriminate production of antiviral or inflammatory cytokines. And I didn't talk about all these, but a majority of these cytokines actually induced by these TLRs have been shown to have anti-HBV effects. So there is significant justification for targeting the pattern recognition receptors. Uh, so now just to give, I think, quick updates on, on where the different pattern recognition receptor clinical trials are at, um, I wanted to go through the, the ones that are the most advanced and the ones that are in phase two or phase one. So the TLR7 mediated interferon alpha production, um, and I think the most mature here is the Gilead's compound of GS9620 is in phase two, uh, and this is data from 
our last presentation at ASLD. Uh, and, and Harry kind of presented some of this data before. He didn't present this. And this is basically the, the peaks here on the graph are ISG15, so interferon stimulated gene um, response. Uh, upon repeated dosing of these patients. So you can see that the drugs are present, the drugs are inducing interferon, and they are stimulating an interferon response. And as Harry pointed out, the, the median change in S antigen, though, was uh, potentially maybe a half log drop after uh, the 12 weeks of treatment. Uh, Roche also has a compound uh, that targets uh, the TLR7 agonists. Um, this one is currently I, I believe it was actually removed from a phase two study, but this data shows a similar effect where it would be inducing ISG15, so suggesting that these are getting in and inducing interferon alpha production. So uh, another compound that is entering phase two now is the Rig I agonist, and these Rig I uh, RNA sensors are actually present in hepatocytes in a number of immune cells and are very effective at stimulating interferon alpha, beta, and interferon lambda production. And so Springbank has their compound SB9200, which is entering phase two, and um, is similar to before, giving a 12-week administration uh, with an ascending cohort. And this was uh, some of their data has already been published in the Woodchuck model, showing uh, fairly impressive effects in dose-dependent reduction during the treatment window in WHV DNA, as well as reduction in the, the Woodchuck hepatitis surface antigen during the treatment window. And uh, Springbank just presented at the International HPV meeting last month the, the data from their first cohort where, uh, given the lowest dose of SB9200 after 12 weeks, they did see uh, a half-log reduction in HPV DNA. Uh, and the last one that uh, I'm going to talk about is, is targeting the TLR8 receptor. And at this point, this is, uh, I think, data now, this, I think this drug is going into com phase one at the moment, but uh, there's been data presented at the EASL meeting um, looking at the Woodchuck model of chronic hepatitis B treatment. And in this model, this was an eight-week treatment window with the TLR8 agonist, uh, GS9688. And in the, in the Woodchuck, it showed uh, that four out of the six Woodchucks showed a pretty significant, a very significant decline in Woodchuck hepatitis DNA, as well as uh, a significant decline in uh, the Woodchuck surface antigen. So this was uh, just presented at EASL last year. So then to wrap up what um, kind of the justification for targeting these pattern recognition receptors, you know, based on the animal on the animal data, it's likely they have real potential. There's good justification from the mice. I think um, we have to determine whether or not those mild doses were realistic doses, and um, we'll see with these, the data yet to come in these trials. Um, induction of interferon alpha, we will see how this works. The localized production of interferon alpha may be sufficient, but we know that it has limited efficacy. IL-18 and IL-12, they show I think very interesting data in the mouse and in the in vitro data, but we still don't have the human data to really know how much these, are going, these cytokines in particular are going to be required to either uh, boost the HPV-specific T cell response or get the innate defectors uh, producing antiviral cytokines in the liver. And you know, in terms of using these pattern recognition receptors, one of the things that we always have to remember is that the liver is dominated by innate defector cells. Um, and so it, it's important to understand if they're going to respond as predicted if we test these drugs using blood from, the, uh, from patients or healthy donors. And it, whether or not it's possible to favor antiviral effects over inflammation. And lastly, really understanding here how the innate effectors, the NK cells, gamma delta, and mate cells, can they target, can we get them to target infected hepatocytes? Um, and then I briefly mentioned in the introduction these negative regulators of innate immunity, so the myeloid drive suppressor cells, the NK trail mediated uh, killing of hepatocytes and T cells. So it's unclear at the moment if we're actually going to be able to target the negative regulation. Um, there may be inhibitors for arginase or IL-10, um, but you know, if you look closely at the data, some of these effects are potentially cohort-specific, so uh, that's yet to be determined. So I think, yep, yeah, that's the last slide. I will end there and look forward to the discussion. Thank you.